Greetings, everybody. Turn your Bibles to your King James Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 37, continuation of the Jeremiah series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Jeremiah 37 and verse 1. And King Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned instead of Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. But neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land did hearken unto the words of the Lord, which he spake by the prophet Jeremiah. And Zedekiah the king sent Mahukal, the son of Shelemiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Masalah, the priest, to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now unto the Lord our God for us. You know, they're, they're asking Jeremiah, please pray to the Lord for us, you know. Now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people, for they had not put him into prison. Verse 5. Then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt. And when the Chaldeans that besieged Jerusalem heard tidings of them, they departed from Jerusalem. So here it is. Nebuchadnezzar's army had already taken Jerusalem once or, or had threatened it once. But then I guess they gave them all the gold, bunch of gold and stuff and they carried it off. And then, um, and then Nebuchadnezzar made Zedekiah the king. So then, I guess Nebuchadnezzar was happy with all the gold left and came, you know, took off. But then Zedekiah didn't do something that uh, Nebuchadnezzar liked, so he came back. So here it is, his troops are besieging the city. But now they hear that Pharaoh, Pharaoh's army, you know, king of Egypt, were coming against them out of Egypt. So... They needed reinforcements, so here it is. They're going to leave Jerusalem for a while, take care of Egypt, and then they're, um, and then we'll see what happens later. Verse 5, Then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt, and when the Chaldeans had besieged Jerusalem, heard tidings of them, yeah, when they heard about it, they departed from Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord unto the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say to the king of Judah, that sent you unto me to inquire of me, Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land. And the Chaldeans shall come again and fight against this city and take it and burn it with fire. So all you uh, people that think that uh, Pharaoh and his army is going to be helping you out, nope, they're going to go back to Egypt. They're not going to be any help. And the Chaldeans might be gone right now, but they're, all, well, you know, they'll be back. Remember Arnold Schwarzenegger in the uh, Terminator movie at the police station? I'll be back. Well, that's what's going to happen. They'll be back. They're going to take the city, and then they're going to burn it. Verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, Deceive not yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. For though 
ye had smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there remained but wounded men among them, yet should they rise up every man in his tent and burn this city with fire. And it came to pass when the army of the Chaldeans was broken up from Jerusalem for fear of Pharaoh's army, then Jeremiah went forth out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin to separate himself thence from the midst of the people. And when he was in the gate of Benjamin, a captain of the ward was there, whose name was Irajah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah. And he took Jeremiah the prophet, saying, Thou fallest away to the Chaldeans. So basically he's saying, Oh, so you're gonna to go to the uh you're gonna to go to the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, you're you're gonna go be with them, huh? Then said Jeremiah, It is false, I fall not away to the Chaldeans, but he hearkened not to him. So Erijah took Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. Wherefore the princes were wroth with Jeremiah and smote him and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had made that the prison. When Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon and into the cabins, and Jeremiah had remained there many days, then Zedekiah the king sent and took him out. And the king asked him secretly in his house and said, Is there any word from the Lord? And Jeremiah said, There is. For, said he, Thou shalt be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto king Zedekiah, What have I offended against thee, or against thy servants, or against this people, that ye have put me in prison? Verse 19. Where are now your prophets? which prophesied unto you, saying, The king of Babylon shall not come against you, nor against this land. See, Jeremiah was telling, preaching this, well, I don't know, preaching, but he was warning them of this before it even happened. Before the king of Babylon's army showed up the first time, he was warning them. But all of Zedekiah's false prophet said, no, 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 we're going to have peace. So basically, Jeremiah is saying, huh, where's your prophets that told you uh, who, where all their prophecies failed? You know, where's all your false prophets? Where are they? Why don't you talk to them? Where are now your prophets, which prophesied unto you, saying, The king of Babylon shall not come against you, nor against this land? Hmm? Where are they? Verse 20. Therefore hear now, I pray thee, O my king, the, my lord the king, let my supplication, I pray thee, be accepted before thee, that thou cause me not to return to the house of Jonathan the scribe, lest I die there. Then Zedekiah the king commanded that they should commit Jeremiah into the court of the prison and that they should give him daily a piece of bread out of the baker street until all the bread in the city were spent. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Now I was talking about all the bread being spent. You know, when you're in a siege in a city, uh, you're not bringing food into the city from outside. That just doesn't happen. So whatever's in the city, once it gets eaten up, there's nothing left. Having walls are great to keep the enemy out, but if you're not growing your own food, or if you don't have a large stockpile, they could just wait you out, starve you out, and when you have starvation, your body can't fight disease, and then disease is rampant. So, first comes hunger, then comes disease. 
And Satan's children knows this lesson quite well. All right, that's the end of Jeremiah chapter 37. All blessings, praise, glory, honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.